What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to talk about pseudo elements. That's before and after elements because they're extremely powerful. There's a lot of really practical use cases for them, but a lot of people don't even know they exist or don't even know how to get started with them or can't even get them to show up when they start trying to work with them. And even the people that know they exist and, and, and like know how to use them, they're not using them enough. I don't think so. I just want to do a, an official video on before and after pseudo elements so that you feel confident enough to start using them appropriately throughout your project. So we're going to do a little crash course on what pseudo elements are, how they work. And then I'm going to show you a really practical real world uh, way to use them based on something that I did for a client and that I do a lot of times for clients. It's something that's very, very common. So it's going to be very valuable training for you. Now, before we get there, a lot of people, I've been, I've been getting blown up, man, on social media, email, every channel people can find me on, they want to know when automatic.css is going to be available. And I can tell you right now, it is very, very close. It's right around the corner. The plugin is working. The dashboard is working. The licensing is working. Uh, version 1.0 of the framework is solidified. The fallbacks are in place. The fallbacks are working. Everything is pretty much ready to go. We're just making the dashboard of the plugin look a little bit nicer. And then it's going to be go time. There is going to be a limited time lifetime deal for automatic.css. Limited, like very limited. <laughs> I don't like LTDs. They're not sustainable. Uh, so it's going to be a very limited time LTD. I know y'all like your LTDs. Uh, so what I would advise you to do is go to automaticcss.com. I'll put a link below get on the waiting list. There's an official waiting list for automatic.css. Uh, if you have any interest in the system, if you have any interest in the LTD, you're going to be, you're going to want to be on the waiting list. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Go get on it. If you miss it, you miss it. And that's that. Okay. All right. Let's dive into our pseudo elements training. All right. So I'm going to start by adding a section and uh, let's talk for a second. Here's the practical use case. And I, I feel like this is a a really good kind of real world thing to kind of model our training off of. It's a pricing page that I built for Doc Ready. And if you look closely, you're gonna see that a lot of these things are pseudo elements. So this price right here, the, the dollar sign is actually a pseudo element. That does not exist inside the Oxygen Builder. The per month tag and the each appointment tag are assigned to classes. Those are not real elements in the Oxygen Builder. Those are pseudo elements. This best value tag, that is a pseudo element. And the check marks on the features items, those are pseudo elements. And you can actually switch the classes so that if you want to check, it'll be a check. If you want to X, it'll be an X. You don't have to worry about actual check marks and Xs and dollar signs and labels inside of the Oxygen Builder. Not necessary and not practical and not efficient, which is why you need to follow this training and know how to do this stuff. All right, so I'm going to go to the Builder. I added a section. Just for the purposes of showing you like what a pseudo element is and how it works, I'm just going to add a text element. We're going to make this say 79. It's going to look like a price. I'm going to go to typography. I'm going to make it really big, 12 rim. I'm going to use a center all class from automatic to get this thing centered in the middle here. And then we're just going to save and look at the front end. So this is what we have so far. And I'm going to be pulling up the HTML so you guys can see that. So we have our little div and it is a 79. Cool. Pseudo elements. If you, and oh, really cool. For those of you who are afraid of writing CSS, don't like writing CSS, don't know how to write CSS, the great things about pseudo elements are you can do them all inside the Oxygen Builder. And that's what I'm going to do for this tutorial. So I want to make it a caveat that you can write the CSS if you want. I write the CSS for pseudo elements because it's easier, it's faster, it's easier to keep organized. But if you need to use the builder to do it, you can use the builder to do it. You do not have to know how to write CSS. That's all I'm going to say about that. Okay. So the way you do it inside the builder is you click this little state button and then you choose one of the pseudo elements. There's two of them. There's a before and there's an after. We're going to use both so you can see how this works. So I'm going to do before. And the most important thing that you need to know about pseudo elements is that they don't exist until you make them exist. 
So by selecting the before, obviously I haven't done anything, so you're not gonna see anything, but you can start doing a whole bunch of stuff. Like you can change its width, you can change its height, you can change its color, you, you're not gonna see it unless two things happen. Number one, you put something in the content box, okay? So if I put a dollar sign, I will see it right off the bat. But what if I don't want actual written content? What if I want a shape? What if I want an image? What if I want something else? You will not see it until you set a display property. So what I would recommend is whenever you're creating a pseudo element, the minute you click before, you go right to layout, you go right to this display area and choose a display. Flex is probably the easiest one. So just click on the flex button. That way, when you start doing stuff, like if I went to size and spacing and said two pixels, height uh, 100 pixels, and then I set a color on that, like a back, any background color, I actually see the pseudo element, all right? Let me go to the front end. There it is, I can see it, right? Uh, but if I did not have that display property, let's go to the before, let's go to layout, let's turn off the display flex, the entire element disappears. You will not, regardless of how much height, how much width, <laughs> it doesn't matter. If there's no display proper, property, you're not going to see it. So, and a lot of people forget that. And they're like, where is it? I can't even get it to show up. So go immediately to the display property and set a display. And like I said, flex is easy. You can do inline flex, you can do block. Uh, inline block uh, sometimes works depending on what it is. Inline sometimes works depending on what it is. And then obviously you have display none, which could be valuable if you wanted to make your pseudo element go away at a certain break point, right? Or on hover or something like that, okay? But I'm just gonna set this to flex. And I'm also going to go to background, take that out and go to size, take that out, take that out. Cause we're not gonna be working with shapes today. We're gonna be working with, and there's just a ton of stuff you can do with pseudo elements. So I'm only gonna cover like a practical use case to get your feet wet and then it's up to you from there. And I'll show you other stuff in other tutorials, but this will get you started. All right, so I want a dollar sign. There it is, cool. Now, because I set this to flex, we're getting some weird alignment. Now, the pseudo element is attached to this element right here, your main element. So if you set a display property on your main element, you can affect how the pseudo element behaves or where it's positioned. So for example, I can go choose my text block, uh, text block, which is not choosing the before, not choosing the after, I'm just choosing the 79, and I can set that to flex. And look what happens when I set that to flex, which the default is row, it puts them in line with each other. That's kind of what I want if we are going for something like this. The question now is how do I get it smaller and how do I get it up there? Well, it is a real, even though it's called a pseudo element, you can do pretty much anything to it that you can do to a real element. So for example, I have my before selected. I can go to my typography tab, set a font size of 40% of, and that's relative to the element it's attached to, 40% of that font size, which the dollar sign is you know, around that. Maybe we'll go with half, so 50%, and there it is. Now, one thing with spacing, and I'll show you this with the after, so there is a second pseudo element that you have access to. It is the after. I'm going to choose that and I'm going to make it say like per month or something like that. So I'm going to do per month. Awesome. You can even put the little dash in there. And now you have a situation where if I make that smaller, so I'm going to go to my typography and do the exact same thing. So we're going to go with like 30%. Um, it's way up there. Um, and it's like, okay, how do I get it down there? And then you're gonna see a problem when we get it down there. The easiest way to get something from the top to the bottom of a container is auto margin. There's a bunch of ways to accomplish this stuff, but for this, for this purpose, auto margin is probably your easiest bet. So if I go to size and spacing, margin, top, auto, if you put auto margin on the top, it forces it away from the top. If I put it on the bottom, it forces it away from the bottom. If I put it on the right, it forces it away from the right. So auto margin forces the thing away from the side that's auto. All right, so I want it away from the top. I put auto on the top and it goes to the bottom. But you can see it's completely misaligned. And this is another um, area where people get really, really tripped up. 
So first let's look at how this is structured in the HTML. Here's my div. I want you to notice, here's your before element, here's your after. It's not before the div and after the div. It's before what's inside the div, that 79, and what's after the 79. That's where the pseudo elements are attaching. The div is actually, if we look at this, see that outline? I'm like pointing with my finger, like y'all can see my finger in the screen. It's, it's obviously the div is much bigger than the 79. And the reason is there is hidden spacing in this element and it's hidden spacing that a lot of people forget about. And that hidden spacing is caused by line height. So remember, we put a 79 in here and on typography, we said, make that thing gigantic, 120 pixels, 12 rem. So obviously line height is attached to that by default. We need to take the line height away and there goes our ghost spacing that was causing all these problems. All right, so I'm gonna hit save, go back to the front end. Now you see we have pretty solid alignment. The other thing I want you to see is that, remember what I said, you can do pretty much anything to a pseudo element that you can do to a regular element. So if I wanted to make this uh, background color, and we'll use a, a variable from automatic.css. Let's choose uh, shade medium, okay? Oh, that's background color, we don't want that. Let's go to typography, we're gonna do that on color. Um, and I, let's do shade light, there you go. Um, cool. And then let's go to our before and let's do the exact same thing. So we'll go to typography, var shade light. So now I have styled my pseudo elements differently from my main element, which is really important to understand that these behave completely independent, even though they're based on that thing and attached to that thing. Um, so if you want the main element to be one color or have a background color, but you want your pseudo elements to look completely different, it's totally, totally possible. All right. So that is kind of like the just crash course in pseudo elements. Like we got them to appear. We can see that we can style them. Let me show you one other thing uh, before we get to our real world tutorial. You can absolutely position these pseudo elements. And the reason I am, and when I say absolutely position them, I'm talking about in actual CSS, absolute positioning. Uh, the reason I'm covering this is because it's another thing that trips a lot of people up and I'll show you what happens. So they go to the before and they're like, you know what? I want to put that kind of in a funky place related to my 79. Um, so what they do is they go to layout and they go to absolute. And then when you put in a position, a top and a left, which you're supposed to do like zero, zero, it fires it all the way over to the edge of the container. And if I did that on my after and I did absolute and now I said zero from the top, zero on the right, which feels like it should be zero around the 79, it, it almost feels unrelated to the 79. It's actually related to the section that the 79 is in. It's like, why is it related to the section? Because absolutely positioned elements attach themselves to a relative parent. And if the parent is not relative, it looks for the next relative parent, all right? so. If we want to contain those pseudo elements to our thing with absolute positioning, our main element, our 79, needs to be the relative parent. So we go to layout, set it to relative, and suddenly you can see our pseudo elements are attached to our 79 instead of attaching themselves to the section. That trips a lot of people up. So now what I could do with my top and my left, if I did percentages, I could do like minus 20, and I could do percent over here, minus 20. It's kind of there. Let's do minus, uh, minus 30. And I can do minus 30 here. And now you can see I've properly positioned using absolute positioning my dollar sign. But my per month is acting up because that's still set to zero, zero. But I just wanted to show you, if you want to absolutely position these things, you can. But if you don't make the main thing relative, then the main thing is not going to be the thing that those pseudo elements are attached to, if that makes any sense. Okay, I think it does. All right, so let's clear this out and let's tackle uh, something practical. Let's create one of these cards. So I'm gonna create another section and we're gonna do BG shade light, okay? Uh, let's do shade ultra light on this. So we'll do BG shade ultra light. 
These are automatic CSS classes, by the way. I'm gonna add a div. We're gonna do grid three on this. We're gonna do grid M1 on that. And we're gonna do div, div, div. This isn't a tutorial on automatic, so I'm just gonna move quickly. We're gonna do gap M and we're ready to go with our cards. I'm also gonna do pad section and we'll do XL, we'll make this a really big section. We'll put heading in here, drag it. Don't do that, never do that. Let's try that again. Yeah, oxygen with these like drag and, you know, drag my padding nonsense. Always trips me up when I'm moving fast. Okay, so I'm gonna drag that up there. Okay, choose a price, great. And again, I am gonna center all of this and I'm going to margin top my pricing grid. I'm going to make a video on why I'm loving margin top more than margin bottom lately, uh, a lot more. I'm, I'm liking it a lot more. And I, I'm, going to, I'm going to create a whole video on why I like margin top versus margin bottom. We'll do margin top L. All right, so I'm going to hit save on this. And we're going to pop a uh, class onto here. So this is going to be our price card. So we're going to do price card, bang, save, and refresh. Okay, so we obviously don't see anything. Let's put a background on the price card. So we're going to do var shade white, and that's going to give us a white background. I'm going to go to borders, radius, and I'm doing a custom class, by the way. I'm still using automatic CSS, but I'm doing it in a custom class because automatic CSS is one of the only utility frameworks for oxygen that gives you hooks using variables. All right, so very, very powerful stuff. So I'm gonna do var, and this is gonna be radius M. That's gonna hook into the uh, radius system in oxygen. Uh, and it's gonna assign that radius to this custom class. And then I'm gonna do some padding in here. Let's do none, var, and you know what? This set is set up a little thinner than I like. We're gonna tackle that in just a minute. So this is gonna be var pad, uh, or sorry, space M. And I'm gonna copy that, basically apply that to all, okay? And then I, I just need to throw like a, let's see what this looks like. So yeah, let's just throw a heading in there. Add heading, please, thank you. All right, and then I will make this an H2. And then our price card needs to be aligning everything to the left. And then we're gonna do price card. And then I do double underscore if you, I, I do need to make a whole video on, on BIM. Uh, but this is going to be our heading for our price card. So that's the way we do the class naming convention to keep everything nice and organized. I'm going to go to typography. Our line height on this is going to be like 1.2. This is a whole training thing that's just set up from scratch. It doesn't have all my normal stuff in it. So we just have to do a little bit more customization than normal. And let's actually make this an H3. Perfect. And I'm going to look at our reference. It's going to say single appointment. Awesome. And then there's some text after that. So and that's going to be like our description. So this is going to be price card, double underscore description. And on the heading, I can do margin bottom and I can do another hook space S for small spacing. And then I'll save. Okay. I want to come to just really quickly because I hate a squished kind of website. Um, why are my global styles not available? Settings, okay, I, I don't have global styles. I guess we won't be changing that. Uh, let's do a double price card instead then because I want these cards to be a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna change that grid three to a grid two. I don't know why that's broken. And this is the beta, so I don't, I don't know of, of oxygen. Maybe running into an issue there. Uh, I'm also gonna do stretch on here so that these can be the same size. And I'm not, I'm just going to leave this blank for now because I want to eventually duplicate this card. So single appointment, I can actually just steal our text from over here to speed things up. Okay. And I promise we're about to get to pseudo elements because we're going to tackle the price now. All right. So we are going to add a text element. And this is going to be called price, not rice, price card, double underscore price. Okay. And I'm going to go to typography and I am just going to go with straight up rims here. 
We're going to make it big like we have it. Wow, that's super big. Let's go with eight. Line height's going to be one. We don't want any of that ghost padding in there. And then I'm going to make this the price. And I think that was 29. Let's not put a dollar sign in there. Let's just put 29 in there. I think that's about, yeah, it's about the right size. And we'll go to typography, font weight, like 800. Ooh, just make it super bold. Uh, and then let's use a color. We'll do var primary. Let's do var. I haven't coded the colors in here yet. Like what's accent look like? Nah, that's no good. Uh, secondary, is that? Oh, okay. We'll just roll with that. Um, yes. All right. So on our little description here, actually on our price card, let's go spacing margin top we're going to use a variable space m and then probably on the bottom as well just to space it away from everything else that's going on okay let's tackle our pseudo elements now so we're gonna to go to typography i actually want this to be a little bit bigger awesome so we need a dollar sign and we need a per month but here's what i'm going to show you okay really cool stuff here so Let's say you were going to make a switcher between like USD and pounds. So dollars and pounds, right? I actually don't know how to, let's, how do you make a pound sign? So pound sign, uh, pound dollar sign. I don't even know how to, how do you search for that properly? There it is. Okay. Awesome. So watch how we do this, right? So we have our price card price. I'm going to make a price card. I'm just trying to show you like, how practical this stuff can can really be so price card price double dash usd boom so on that class i'm going to do a before and then i'm going to make a dollar sign and then i am going to go to typography font size 50 percent and then i'm going to uh do let's see uh, let me let me go to my main class price card price usd and i'm going to go to layout flex all right so that's going to get my thing up to the top there and that's all i'm going to do that's really all i'm going to do now i'm going to do price card double underscore price double dash uh g what is it bp i think it's gbp <laughs> let's look Everybody in the UK is like, F this guy, uh, GPB. All right. So on the GPB, I'm actually going to just copy my USD styling over to GPB. And now I'm going to delete the USD. And now I'm going to go to my GPB and I'm going to just change the content. Where are we? And the before to that little symbol. Look at that. So if you had a switcher, imagine you had a switcher and you had two grids and you wanted one to be USD or one to be uh, this uh, the pound, right? So I can take that off. I can type in USD, not used, USD, choose the USD class, and I got a dollar sign. If I choose the GBP, GBP, I get that sign. Okay, so that's a good practical use case, right? And I'm showing you how it doesn't, like I just made a class and threw the class on that element and now I have new pseudo elements available on that class. I can do the same thing, watch this, price card, double underscore price, and I'm gonna do double dash monthly. And then on that one, I have two new pseudo classes on there, right? I can go to the after and I can say this says, uh per month and then we obviously need to style that so i'm going to go to typography font size 30 percent okay and then i'm going to go do my margin auto trick on the top to get it down there so now it says per month that's still a little bit big for me so i'm going to go 20 percent and i'm also going to go typography letter spacing uh and let's do m minus 0.025 okay probably needs to be bigger than uh more squished than that awesome and then i'll go to just so you guys can see other things happening opacity 0.7 and i'll go to my before as well which is on my usd before opacity 0.7 there as well now nah, that doesn't look so great we'll leave it like that Okay. I can also, by the way, go to margin if I want to bump that over a little bit and I can do margin M, let's do like 0.25 
and that'll just bump it away a little bit, maybe 0.15. Just give it a little bit more breathing room, right? So it's like not on top of the number. So there's my $29 per month, but I still need a maybe per year, right? So I'm gonna make my class price card double underscore. Well, I misspelled it. Let's try again. Not ice, price. It's lagging like crazy right now. Price card double underscore, and we're gonna do uh, annual. Uh, no, sorry. I need to add the price. The lag kills me and it's throwing me off. Price double dash annual. And then I'm gonna take the monthly design. I'm gonna copy that, those styles and add it to annual so I don't have to redo all my work again. Delete monthly, go to the bef go to the after and change this to per year. So if you have one price that's per year and one price that's per month, you don't have to create new elements. You just pop a class on or pop a class off, right? Um, so there you go. We just did practically speaking two pseudo elements. If I were to duplicate that card, and so I make this say single appointment, uh, let's say subscription, something like that. And I'll say this is going to be $29. No, it's going to be uh, $290, right? And I have the per year. The $29 is going to be per month. So I'm going to take off the annual class and I'm going to pop on the monthly class. And now that one says per month. This one says per year. They both look the same, right? They're both pseudo elements. So very, very easy. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is tackle these actual uh, features, right? So I'm just gonna, I'm not going to add a div and an icon and text and try to align them and then duplicate, duplicate, duplicate and all of that stuff. I'm literally just going to write, uh, put a text module in just like that. And we're going to make it say some stuff like this. Same day appointments. I'm going to add a class. This is going to be price card double underscore feature, enter. And now that I have a class, I can feel free to duplicate. And I just don't want them all to say the same thing. So I'm just going to copy this out real quick. Grab that one and grab the last one. We'll just rock and roll with four for right now. All right, cool. And because this is a class, I can grab it. I can grab it. I can grab it. Oh gosh, beta. Beta's giving us problems, y'all. Beta's hurting us right now. Let me go to structure. Let me go in here. Let me go in here. No, it's this card. Let me see if I can grab that here. Oh gosh, gonna have to refresh. Okay, <laughs> man, I love betas, right? Um, it didn't remember anything I just did. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a text box in again, and hopefully this time it doesn't uh, die. All right, price, card, double underscore, and this is gonna be feature. Well, remember the class. All right, duplicate, 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 duplicate. And I'm going to add a margin to the bottom. And we'll do var space XS. Perfect. And uh, that's looking pretty good. I kind of want more spacing here. All right, the beta is really, all right, where are we at? Price card price, okay. So M is good there, it's good there. Let's change this to L. Let's just make a lot of uh, breathing room here. Okay, that's better. All right, so now I can just copy these in. Okay, so I've got the content in there. I've got a class on there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create uh, two new classes. So we're gonna do price card, double underscore, feature, double dash, included. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is where I'm gonna attach my little icon to. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go to background, uh, actually, sorry, layout. Make sure that that is set to flex, just your main class. Then what I'm gonna do is go to my before, and we're gonna start styling our pseudo element or creating our pseudo element. So we need a background image, so I'm gonna browse for that image. It's gonna be the check mark. Now, this is complicated by the fact that I don't have SVG support on here, so I put PNGs in from the noun project and they actually have padding around them. So we might tackle how to solve that. It, it does create some complication. If you're using an SVG with no extra padding, it's gonna work a lot smoother than this. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and select my check and select image, thank you. Awesome, you don't see it yet because um, it needs some size and spacing. 
So width, I'm going to do rem three. Now you see that there's like a placeholder for it. And I'm going to do background. And I've already got that there. I need to position this left 50%, top 50%. I need to make sure that it does not repeat. And then I need to set a manual background size and come in here with a rim of like three. And then height, we can do that as well. All right. So, and actually, I don't even think we need the height. So I now have a check uh, on my feature included class. I also want a feature excluded class. So we're going to do price card feature double dash excluded. And then I'm going to copy all that work that I just did on included over to excluded. But now when I take off my included, I can go change my before background image to an X. And now my excluded class makes an X instead of a check. See what I mean about the padding in there? Um, so let's see if we can fix that real quick. So I'm going to go to the before that's holding my icon. I'm going to go to layout relative and left side. I'm going to do uh, zero. It's going to actually need to be negative. I'm going to change this to rim. Let's try minus one. Oh, like right off the bat, just guessed perfectly. Okay. Um, and then on the on the margin right, I kind of need to pull some of that back in. So minus 0.5, like to pull the same day appointments back in a little bit. And again, this is just because I'm having to fix that padding issue that was in there before. Now, the, the easiest way to do this is to add the included class back, copy my excluded style over to included, and then I can get rid of the excluded class, go to my before. Sorry, this is, a, this is just... You don't have to do this a lot of times. I'm just, if you run into this problem, I'm showing you how to fix it. Uh, and then switch this back to my check. So it has the same styling. All right, so look at this. If this is included, I literally come down, I type included and I say it's included. And I get a check mark. And if I say this one's included, I get a check mark. Like I don't have to worry about putting physical check marks in there. Included. Now this one, let's say it's excluded. And you could also do other things with your excluded class. So you could say, hey, if it's excluded, then I want to go to effects opacity 0.5. So it's grayed out. The whole thing is grayed out. Uh, I didn't do that on my pseudo element. I did it on my main class of excluded, but the whole thing is grayed out now. That is a super easy and practical way to, to deal with this kind of stuff. Because look what happens when I duplicate my card and I come over here and I say, well, on the yearly, that's actually included. So I remove that class. I type included. It's included. Save. Boom. I didn't have to move checks around, replace checks with X's. I just, it's classes control everything. Um, on mobile, let's say on mobile, we don't want these uh, check marks and X's. I don't know why you wouldn't, but you could now come down to like 768 and or let's say 480 and you can say well there's just not enough room in here for those icons okay cool so you go to price card included you go to the before you go to layout display none now you don't have any icons on mobile devices for things that are included right you can maybe leave the excluded one you can do whatever you want to do because the infrastructure that you built was all built properly with pseudo classes. Last thing I want to show you is these little badges. All right. So I'm going to not put, I'm, I'm not going to put an element inside this card at all. We're going to put a class on the price card and we're going to call it price card double dash featured, or we can say, let's say best value. We'll just say best. So price card double dash best. All right. I got pseudo elements to work with. So I'm going to use the after in this case, and I am going to put content in the content box. It's going to say best value. Look where that shows up way down here. That's obviously not where we want it. So I'm going to say that this needs to be, first let's style it a little bit more. So we're going to say background color. Uh, we'll do var primary. Okay. And then on the text color, typography color, we'll do var shade white. So it's just going to be white text. And then let's do some padding. So we'll do M, let's do two, two, that's left and right. Padding on the top. Oh, I also like to go to typography always just clear the line height out on these kinds of things. 
because it gives you ghost padding that you don't realize you're dealing with. So we'll do one on one. That might be a little aggressive. We'll do seven, five, five. Okay. 0.75 there. And then this might be like four and four. We're going to kind of, we'll, we'll see how big we need to make it in a minute. Uh, we'll also go to typography. Well, I love that. That's cool. Oxygen, like <laughs> just leaving the, the pink padding thing there. Uh, typography, let's go uppercase on this. And let's go with font size needs to be a little smaller. Let's hook in. Let's go var text s. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Um, size and spacing. I think we're good. Let's go to layout absolute. Bam. So it pops it up to here. But when I try to position it, it's probably going to fly away. See how it flew away? We've already talked about how to solve this problem. I go to my main thing, price card best, not my pseudo element, just the best class. And I set that to relative. And now it's attached itself to the card. Now I can say write zero. And we are going to have to, uh, oh wait, I need to go to my, my after. That's the thing I'm trying to position. So right needs to be zero. I can take left out of there now. Now it's off to the right. Now I can just transform it. So let's see how we're going to do this. We're going to go to, uh, I think it's under effects, transform, rotate, 45. Bam, look at that. Now I, I, I do need to position it a little bit better. I'm probably going to need to translate it now. So I can go to, uh, again, effects, transform, add transform. Let's do a translate. Okay. So translate on the X axis. I always have to like just play around with this stuff. Uh, let's do 10, 20, 25. Would that do it? Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Duh. Okay, what am I thinking? Um, now we're going to translate it Y. We need it up into that corner more. Um, so I'm going to do like minus 5%, minus 15%, minus... Uh, let's just make it a little bit bigger. So I actually don't need any more padding. Let's do width rim. I don't need, I didn't even need to do it with padding in the first place. Let's do 15. We can take some of this padding off just like one and one. Okay. And then let's typography center it. <laughs> it's kind of weird because you're looking at a tilted thing, trying to, trying to play with it. Um, sizing, let's do 20 rim. doesn't matter. It just needs to be like big enough to go off the edges. Now I need to translate it a little bit more, I think. So we'll go to effects, transform, translate, minus 20 on the Y. Okay, that's good. Now you're like, Kevin, that looks absolutely awful. You're right. So we're going to go to price card, best, layout. And now I'm, I remember I put this class on the card but it's only the best class, right? It's not my main price card. So I can do a lot of things that I'm not doing on my actual price card, uh, like make the overflow hidden, right? So remember, I put this class on the card. I can effectively say, don't let that pseudo element that I'm also attaching to this class go outside of the card, which the class is attached to. If you're a beginner, you're like, what just happened, right? But if you're not a beginner, you're realizing kind of what's going on here, that I've just made this uh, not be able to go outside the bounds of the card. So if that overflow is visible, that's what you get. If the overflow is hidden, that's what you get. So you don't need like, you don't need to measure, I'm pointing at my screen like you, you guys can see my finger again. You don't need to measure like the distance between the top and the right side of the card and get it perfect and like cut things off and figure out ways to do that. No, no, no. You just put a big ugly ass block there and then be like, I don't know, just hide everything else. <laughs> like that's, that's how I do it anyway. Um, but no, that's, that's legit how you do it. So let's look at it. Bam. There we go. Because it's all pseudo elements, like it doesn't matter what happens on mobile. Like we're, we're getting it to be nice. Now you might run into a problem right there. See that a little overlap action there. So all we need to do is make sure that we're protecting that text over there. So the best way to do that, make sure that that text doesn't get anywhere near the right-hand side. There's a bunch of ways to do that. Um, you could do padding over here on the card, or you could just assign like a max width. 
to that text. So we can do rim, uh, let's try 24. Is that gonna be too big? No, that's perfect, okay? So now it'll never get over there. Boom, and that, that's a little extreme, right? We could, we could say, uh, let's see, what's 32 do? Okay, that's good, it just breaks away. But basically that thing can get all the way over here and it's not gonna touch. Save, all right, boom. Now we come in and we're good. Like it almost touched, but it didn't. All right, so we're pretty good. And you could finagle that on mobile devices, whatever you wanna do. The whole point of this, we're not trying to make this perfect. We're trying to teach you how to use pseudo elements. So we used a pseudo element for our dollar sign, which we also saw we can use pounds and dollars just based on changing the class per year or per month, just on basing the, uh, changing the class. By the way, we didn't, we need to do this per month. We never did that. So I take off my annual class. I drop in my monthly class. Now it says the correct thing. So let me go to the front end. Boom, $29 per month or $290 per year. We saw how we can do checks and Xs by adding or removing classes. We got a little best value tag going on here. This is the power of pseudo elements. If you love this video, hit like, drop a comment below if you have any questions. If you feel like this really helped you understand pseudo elements better in a more practical way, drop a comment and let everybody know. Like let, when, when people are looking at videos, they're like, did this help anybody? And they read the comments. And if everybody's like, man, this helped me, this helped me, this helped me, they know to watch the video. If there's no comments, they don't know if they should take the time. All right, so just help them out. Drop a comment, drop a like, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I'll be back very soon. Peace.